To make a build of your game in Unity, I'm sure many of you are already familiar with the standard build settings window you can open up with Control shift b Here you can add in the scenes that you want to include, set the platform that you're developing for, and set some options before pressing the build button. Now this works all well and good for the most part, but you are fairly limited in the options that you can configure, plus it can get kind of tedious if you're frequently changing build settings to create different types of builds, such as if you're making a multiplayer game where maybe you want to have different build types for a client, a server, debug builds, release builds, maybe you want to have a server controller app, all of a sudden you have a bunch of different types of builds and now you need to manage all those different types of settings. Of course you can create your own custom build interface, but that could end up being quite a bit of work for the average developer. But what if I told you that Unity has a secret way to configure builds that gives you greater control over your build options and they're much easier to use because you can persistently save unique build configuration data into separate assets allowing you to execute builds of different types without even thinking twice. So today we're gonna to be talking about build configuration assets, an experimental feature of the Unity game engine that was originally developed to allow you to create projects using Unity's entity component system. However, in my testing, I've been able to build non-ECS projects just fine. Now in the past, these build configuration assets were the only way that you could build Unity ECS projects. However, now that Unity ECS is now 1.0, gearing up for its production ready release, you can use the standard build settings window. And then real quick, let me just reiterate a quick disclaimer because this is an experimental feature of the Unity game engine. Please use this at your own risk and just know that Unity will not provide you any support if you screw up anything in your project using this experimental feature. That being said, I personally am using these build configuration assets in a production project and have not had any issues with them. So these build configuration assets are not going to be available to you by default. So you will have to open up the package manager and go ahead and add in the platforms package. The way that you do that is you just go up to this plus button and you can say add package by name or add package by git URL, depending on your unity version. And then here you'll basically type in com.unity.platforms. Now I already have it in my project, but once you click add, it's just going to go through a loading process is, and then it's going to go ahead and add in the platforms package as well as some dependent so you will see that it does include the jobs package, so it does utilize the job system. However, the entities package is not a dependency of this, so you don't need to have ECS in your project. And once again, you will see this nice big yellow experimental because as of right now, it is an experimental package. Now, as far as Unity version compatibility, unfortunately, it's kind of hard to say because this is the entire documentation that is available for the platforms package. It really does not give you much and especially does not tell you anything about specific Unity version. I know that I have actually used the platforms package in previous versions of Unity. So just be aware that, you know, maybe if you are using an older version of Unity, I currently am using Unity 2022.2.1. So if you are using an older version, just be aware that you may be getting an older version of the platforms package and things may work a little bit differently than in this video. So anyways, I've just set up this test little scenario here where maybe we have say a little client and server set up. So this is kind of our client, and let's see if we can go ahead and connect to a server. Um, again, we're just kind of a little debug environment and we don't have an active server. So it's actually not going to find anything. What we're gonna do is go ahead and create a build configuration asset for the server build. So the way we'll go ahead and do that is we'll just first go ahead and create a folder. So this is going to be the build configs folder. So we'll go ahead and go into the build configs folder and we'll right click and go ahead and do create build configuration, empty build configuration. And here we can call this uh, server build. So now when we click on this server build, you'll see over in the inspector, it's basically just kind of this empty build configuration asset. So now we can actually add some components of this to configure how we want our build set up. So the way we can do this, we can do an add component and we'll go to unity build a common. And then here the first one we'll do is just set our general settings. So here this has kind of, you know, the product name, company name and version number here. So what we can do here is for the project name, we can say, you know, cool multiplayer. Company name, of course, is Turbo Makes Games. Let's say we're in, say, version 0.5 of this. Okay, and then we can go ahead and add another component. The next one that we're gonna do is we'll go to the Unity build.classic and we'll add a classic build profile. So the classic build profile, you see this is going to have uh, kind of a number of different things here. Um, the one main thing that it adds is basically where we can select the platform that we're developing to. Right now, just a, a Windows build is fine. 
and we can set this if we want it to be a debug, a development, or a release build. I'll just leave it as a development build for now. And you see, we kind of have you know grayed out some other of these default options here. You can go ahead and change in any of these that you want. One of these that we will definitely want to change is the scene list here. So for this one, we're just gonna go ahead and click this plus button. So that means that we're basically overriding these settings. And then here's where we basically add in whatever scenes that we want to include in our build. So I'll go ahead and click on add element. You'll see that we can actually select a scene asset now. So I'll go ahead in here and then I'll go ahead and do our debug server. So we have our regular debug server. Uh, we don't need to select auto load because the first scene is always going to be auto loaded and that should be enough for just a regular simple build here. So we'll go ahead and make sure we apply these settings down at the bottom. And then now up at the top, all we do is just click the build button and it's just gonna start building right away. So you can start to see how easy these are going to be. Basically when we have a bunch of these different build configuration assets built out, all we need to do to create a new build is just select the build asset that we want to build and then click the build button. And then now that this one has actually finished, you'll see that in the console here, you'll see that we have server build success. And then we actually have the output path to it right here. So we can just go ahead and double click on this. And so you'll see that it opens up the file explorer right to that file path here. Now I'm just gonna show you where the default file path is going to be. So basically just in our project root right here, it's gonna create this builds folder. You don't have to have this already created. Um, so we can go into here and then the subfolder that's going to contain all the actual files is gonna be the same name as our build configuration asset. So we can go into there and then you'll see that we now have our cool multiplayer. So let's go ahead and fire up our server here. You'll see that the server started, it's now awaiting connections. So now we can actually go ahead and get connected. So now we can come back over to our clients and we'll go ahead and connect to the server. And you'll see that we are now connected and now we have our you know sweet little Turbo Mix Games guy dancing around in our awesome little multiplayer setup here. So that's kind of the bare basics of how to create a build configuration asset. Now, a really important part of these build configuration assets is we can actually set up shared build configurations. So for example, if we wanna have kind of like a tiered structure where you know all of our kind of build assets import from one main build asset, we can do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and say delete this initial server build that we have I'm gonna go ahead and create a new build configuration, which we can just call uh, base config. And then so our base config, we can include the regular general settings, and this will be our cool multiplayer. And then this one's on say 0.6 now, we can go ahead and apply that. And of course we can add you know as many settings in here as we want. But let's just go ahead and create another build configuration and this will be our server config here. So now up at the top of this server config, you'll see that there's these shared configurations. So we can say add configuration and we can select one and we'll select our base config here. And you'll see that it automatically inherits, you know, all these settings from our base config. And so if I actually went back to this base config, what if we change this to say, you know, our 1.0 we can go ahead and apply that. Now the server config is gonna inherit those changes so you'll see that it's now on 1.0. So here I've basically just replicated those same exact settings that we had previously for our server. Now say if we wanted to maybe create a different build configuration for our client, we can go ahead and again use those shared configurations from the base config. You'll see that we import the 1.0 version. Uh, this time we can go ahead and add a classic build profile. We'll make this a release build instead. And then for our scene list, we're gonna go ahead and add in the client scene so we can just apply here. So now if we wanna make a client build, all we need to do is just click the client build assets, go ahead and click build at the top. And if we need to create a server build, we can just go ahead and click the server config, hit build at the top. Again, don't even need to think about anything. We can just go back and forth between these super easy. So anyways, that is an overview about build configuration assets. I think you can start to see how powerful these are and how nice these have been for me at least to develop with. Um, as I am making a network, networked project where we have you know, many multiple builds that I need to juggle, you know, this has just made it super easy um, to, again, don't even need to think about it. I can just click a build asset, 
quick build and start testing things almost immediately. Anyways, that's about it for today's video. Go download the platforms package, install it in your project, play around with these build configs, have fun with them, learn a lot. Feel free to let me know if you do have any questions, but just don't ask me about what network stack I'm using in this video because it's all faked for today's video. Anyways, hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.